With development pressures, climate change and declining space for connectivity across the Greater Sydney Basin and beyond, there is an increasing need for restorationists, plant producers, planners and landscape architects to collaborate on ensuring natives of the correct provenance and genetics are conserved as well as planted within urban spaces. This afternoon we're having some excellent speed talks, they're case studies. Our first speaker is Marie Whelan, uh, who's Senior Land Services Officer from um, the Wyong Office of uh, Greater Sydney LLS. And Marie works in the area of engagement, education and practice change. But she has a particular interest in uh, rural lifestyle landholders, as well as land care volunteers and their networks. So welcome Marie. Good afternoon everyone. So with my role with local land services, I um, come, come across a lot of land care groups and in particular interest in the nurseries that a lot of them are involved in uh, for a variety of reasons. And I guess one of the things that I was really interested in, I, I could sort of see the value of them in, in that kind of social aspect, that they were a great opportunity for land care groups to to sort of diverge their interests and, and really engage um, a different group of people to work in the nurseries and that was amazing but I guess what I hadn't really factored in when I started looking at this area was just the actual role they have in um, seed collection and developing seed banks and also in um, providing local prominent seeds to lots of different communities in Greater Sydney Local Land Services region which is the central coast and, and the vast area of Greater Sydney including the Blue Mountains and south down near Camden. And I've got examples of three different nurseries, quite different, in quite different patches of Greater Sydney. And um, at the end, we can maybe talk a little bit, if I've got a moment or two, about um, where to from here in terms of these nurseries and how we can help support them. Because there's quite a few. There's probably around at, at least 20, and they're not the council ones. These are community nurseries. So the first one that I wanted to talk to you about today was Budgie Ward June Care. They were interested in developing a nursery because they realised the value of planting Indigenous species back within that June Care system that was pretty degraded up in um, Budgie Woy, which is north of the entrance on the central coast. The vegetation was in really poor condition, um, so there was a monoculture of weeds and that area had ex experienced substantial mining in the 50s and 60s, so it was in pretty poor condition. So at the time, some of the volunteers with that bush care group were very um, closely associated with um, the environment. So they really understood the value of sourcing indigenous seeds for that particular site. Another aspect, you can see that sort of site, that's what it looked like quite some years ago. And they could see that it was a very sensitive area, but it was also would require salt tolerant plants. So they were really interested in achieving that objective. They were faced with a site that had some dune stabilisation fencing and then also some, obviously some vegetation, but just a lot of weeds. So they are really keen to do something about that. And as you can see, they've made some great inroads. So much so, um, and I'll go into a little bit detail in a minute, but so much so that the work of Budgie Ward June Care has been emulated by a number of other groups in that particular part of the Central Coast region. So other groups have found out about what these guys have been up to and are, are sort of basically um, copying the work that they do, which is amazing. Pretty powerful stuff, really. So the bush regeneration team um, up in Budgie Woy, they work in groups and they collect seeds, um, seed from June care sites in that area, all in and, in and around the Budgie Woy June system. And then um, they have a nursery and the nursery has been um, funded from council proceeds over the years, but also substantial funding from local sponsors, which has been amazing. So these guys have managed to actually engage local corporate um, organisations to help fund um, materials and tools and equipment and received, you know, the odd grant from organisations like local land services and environmental trusts. So that all helps as well. Um, the nursery, um, for obvious reasons, it provides lots of different tasks for their groups. So that's been a really good outcome for them. 
and um, they've become so um, popular and so efficient that they're now supplying plants to Lake Macquarie Council within a 12 kilometre area north of the coast in that dune system. Just got a photo of some very happy volunteers working in the nursery out at Budgiewoy. Uh, there's lots and lots of teams that work in the dune care system but the nursery guys meet probably I think it's once a week on a Tuesday morning and they do lots of work there. So I've, I've painted a pretty happy picture but they do have some challenges. Um, they're caring for 13 acres of land which is a big task for a local group. So they're always trying to kind of work with local government, Central Coast Council to ensure that they know what's going on and they're on the same page to get that continued assistant assistance from them. Um, they also have to deal with antisocial behaviour. They're in a holiday area, so that's a bit of a battle with um, trash on the dunes and, um, you know, vandalism and also dogs just being let loose on the dune, in the dune system. They have to do backup watering, so as well as planting, collecting the seed, propagating, planting, backup watering, and that's just as important as all of the weeding that they do as well. And their success rate for their planting is about 90%, which is pretty amazing. So much so that they are a land care winner for our Greater Sydney Regional Land Care Awards for 2019. And they're on Facebook if you want to check them out. They actually post probably every week, so that's pretty cool. So heading further down the coast now in the Ride Eastwood area, and um, I thought it was worth a visit to the Habitat Nursery. They commenced work in 2012, and um, that nursery is coordinated by volunteers from the Habitat Network. And it was basically set up to provide an affordable source of local native plants for that particular community in the right area. So that community, we're talking about local bush care groups, schools, and also supplying plants for a, um, a habitat corridor project that the Habitat Network's been involved with for a very long time, and that's to help develop substantial corridors in a um, pretty urban area to help bring back the pollinators and the little birds and and all of the, um, the native animals that really are missing those corridors. So that's something that this nursery is providing plants for. The group provides affordable plants in that, in that space and um, they can sell plants to the community as well. Um, they take cuttings as well as seeds and they take it all from that ride Hunters Hill area. So they're trying to kind of maintain that local provenance and have that integrity. Uh, one thing that's really important to note about this particular nursery is that they have a really good system and protocol for the collection of seed. The seed's collected and stored in brown paper bags with name, date, provenance and a batch number. And they have all the details recorded on a database. So these guys are pretty serious when it comes to the work they're doing. The bags are all kept in storage boxes and well kept. And then they're all potted up by batch number. And then the group also keeps a record of every batch number and where it goes within the local government area. So that's, you know, it's, it's serious business. Overall, the seeds and cuttings um, are taken from about 246 different species of plants. And they technic seek technical advice from other nurseries and also they've got a local botanist on board who can give them a hand. They have to have a pretty flexible working system with their volunteers. So people are invited to sort of be there for an hour or be there coming to come along every week, you know, whatever they, they can do. Within a period of a year, they had a total of 221 people volunteer, 53 of those were repeat offenders. So that's a pretty good outcome for a group. Some of the difficulties they are faced with is it's that really hard to secure, secure seed stock. I think we've talked a little bit about that today. You know, there's less pollinators around. Um, some of their rarer plants are affected by drought, so there's just fewer of them to collect seed from. Collecting from a really small remnant vegetation corridors, so things like that. They're also very mindful of climate change and thinking through how that looks in the real world. I'm being told to sort of hurry up, so I will, because I really wanted to share with you Megalong Valley Public School, which is an amazing little primary school up in the Megalong Valley, who's been inspired by their local high school to also have a look at whether they could incorporate land care into their school. And they formed a partnership with Gulgong Land Care in the Megalong Valley. And at the same time as doing that, they also became aware of a critically endangered Callistemon species, Callistema megalogensis, and they realised that this particular species was really depleted. So the students were very interested in working out how they could save that. And I just wanted to share with you. Well, I'll teach you why the Callistemon megalogensis is so important. 
We know that we can do this well as we are keen to save this plant. We are in a unique position to do this because Megalon Public School is only one kilometre away from where the Callistamon megalongensis grows. While our soil is different to the soil in Nellie's Glen, we can use compost, water crystals and mulch to make a boggy soil. We will grow the plant through propagation and germination. Here I have some seeds. This is where we'll showcase our Callistamons. These are our first plants, donated to us as a part of Goolong Land Care. Okay, that's it for that one. So I guess I just wanted to share that with you because it's pretty cute. And there's some takeaways to be had, but basically I just wanted to share those with you because I want us to all understand the role of these volunteers and the support that we can maybe help develop and give to them. We're already providing, but more and more. And also, what's the role of private landholders in that mix? How can we help engage private landholders who could also have a very important role to play? So thank you very much. Here, here, thank you very much. That's excellent.